I rise, Madam Speaker, to lead the debate of and have read for a second time in this Honorable House the bill shortly titled Freedom of Information Amendment Bill 2023. Madam Speaker, I'll be mercifully brief. <laughs> and there's a reason I can be, uh, even though this is an important bill. In 2018, the Freedom of Information Act was passed in Parliament, but it was never activated. The Act provides a mechanism by which members of the public, particularly the press, can gain access to government information with certain exceptions. Madam Speaker, the bill itself really just cleans up the Act. There is one fundamental change envisioned by the bill. The original Act contemplated the engagement of information officers in each ministry, a significant cost. However, we are on the government side of the view that the persons already appointed in the public service can be assigned by their respective line ministers after consultation with the respective permanent secretaries to serve as information officers. They can get support from the information commissioner to ensure that requests for information can be processed efficiently. If there's a need for persons to be appointed by the public service commission, Sorry, is if there's a need, persons can be appointed by the Public Service Commission to specifically serve as information officers, and the bill allows this option. The bottom line, Madam Speaker, is that each ministry will have an information officer assigned to receive and respond to requests for information. An information commissioner will be engaged to supervise the process, receive complaints from persons who feel aggrieved, investigate complaints, create policies, and lay reports about requests to the National Assembly. Madam Speaker, in essence, the Freedom of Information Act, though significant, is very simple. It allows people to get access to information in the government. However, there are some exceptions which I want the people to know. Information subject to legal privilege will not be disclosed. Commercial and confidential information, information involving the health and safety of individuals, information that may interfere in law enforcement, information that can cause serious prejudice to the defense or national security of St. Kitts and Nevis, information related to sustainable development, and information about policy making and operation of public bodies. Other than those exceptions, Madam Speaker, this significant bill will give our people the right of access to information such that we have a transparent, open government and it is quite significant, Madam Speaker, because even though it is of five years vintage, it has never had the teeth necessary to give the press the freedom to proceed like most of our Caribbean colleagues do. Most of them do have Freedom of Information Act. We are, we are a bit late to the race, but it is the goal of this government to implement these important bills so that we can really bring good governance to our society. Uh, Madam Speaker, the Freedom of Information Bill contemplates that persons can submit letters to the, re the respective information commissioners, uh, sorry, information officers in each ministry, and they have a certain time within which to provide that information. And if a person feels aggrieved, or if there are delays in the process, the person can then go to the information commissioner and seek redress. And those are the important elements of this piece of legislation. And I can tell you, Madam Speaker, that the amendments which I spoke of that clean up the act, which are very minimal, were made after consultation with the press association that met with my office and indicated what they would like to see. And what they asked for, they got, because at the end of the day, Madam Speaker, the press is the fourth estate and they should be allowed access to government information to keep the other three arms of government in check. And with that said, Madam Speaker, those few words, I wish the bill safe passage.